Welcome to the Grok Shop. In this video, I'm gonna show how I did a one man brake bleed, brake fluid flush on a 2007 Honda Element. Okay, I used a syringe with some quarter inch inside diameter vinyl tubing, some brake fluid, that's a 32 ounce bottle, a spaghetti jar, uh, a block of wood, and some silicone grease. So here I've got some shots of the undercarriage where I'm gonna jack the car up with the hydraulic floor jack. I like to place it uh, right behind these tow hook loop things that are attached to the frame. Here's a shot of the cross member which we'll also use for added safety. Okay, so we start off by putting the parking brake on and chocking off the rear wheels. Now I want to pop the hood. I'll be jacking the car completely up, so I want to loosen up the lug nuts on all four wheels. Um, better to use an impact driver if you have it. If not, uh, the old flip-flop technique still works pretty good. Okay, so time to place the hydraulic floor jack. You can see I use a little wooden disc to help eliminate um, scarring to the undercarriage paint and possible rusting down the line. For this car, I just jacked to the max with this jack. Uh, gives me about three inches of clearance under the wheel here. Of course, we put in the jack stands right here at these pinch welds uh, with a little cardboard on it to protect that paint. Be aware that Honda recommends bleeding in a clockwise pattern looking down at the car starting at the left front. So it's left front, right front, right rear, left rear. I'll be jacking the car completely up for this job, so that's why it's okay if I start at the right front here. Now, of course, you don't need to necessarily um, take all four wheels off at the same time. You could jack left front, bleed that, put that wheel back on, and move around the car that way. Um, but I'm actually going to be rotating the tires. I'll put that in a, probably in a different video, I guess. Um, and so I decided to jack the car completely up. Okay, for the rear, it's a little easier to jack the whole car up uh, from the middle of this cross member. So that's the way I like to do it. The important thing is when you rest it back down on the jacks, you still got just enough clearance to get the wheels off. So we can go ahead here now and get all four wheels off. Well, it's a good idea to siphon off as much of the bad uh, brake fluid from the top as you can. I use a syringe, you can use a turkey baster. Now, other than a service interval, how do you know when it's time to flush your brake fluid? Well, when it kind of looks like this. <laughs> Um, when it gets to be uh, sort of a maple syrupy, uh, dark tea color, um, that's bad. I mean, it's absorbing water and contaminants like rust and God only knows what. Um, and it basically should be pretty clear. So like it starts out clear and then as it absorbs water, you start to get a little rust in the line and the rust colors it up and uh, you get other contaminants in there. And as all that happens, you lose braking efficiency and, it, and it's bad and corrosive for your brake system. Now, of course, brake fluid is very corrosive. I like to put down a shop rag underneath um, where I'm pouring the fluid, you know, because it splashes and whatnot. Also, it's a good idea to wear some gloves. I couldn't find mine at first. I think I eventually get them on here. There we go. Take the rubber cap off. I like to put some WD-40 on the threads and let it penetrate for a while. 
Um, if it's really dirty, you can do multiple dabs and even use a wire brush um, to really clean those threads up and make it easy to turn and bleed the brakes. So I decided to use a spaghetti jar um, for my brake uh, fluid catchment. So I pour the old fluid that I pulled from the reservoir up top into the spaghetti jar first to give it a little weight and just get it all in one place. Um, and then I'm going to cut a hole in the center of the top and put my tube through there and let it go all the way down into that fluid there. I'll put a link to where I got my tubing. It's really cheap. Um, I always like to use the fresh so it's nice and clear. I can see what's going on. Anyway, your tube should go up and make an arc like that. Um, because of the way the nipple points, it's kind of kind of does that by default. Now, when you're doing this uh, as a one-man job, you don't want to loosen it too much. Otherwise, lifting up on the brake pedal will create a vacuum at the threads and suck air potentially into the calipers and up in the line even. Um, so I like to loosen it just a tad at a time and then um, here I'm putting the block of wood underneath the brake pedal. That's so the brake pedal doesn't go all the way down because the master cylinder can overextend its normal range and potentially be damaged if you don't do that. But um, anyway, what I was saying was this, this brake line um, will just a little bit will start to come out as you open it maybe an eighth of a turn at a time until you see it kind of flowing pretty good um, when you mash on the pedal um, keep opening it a little bit more and a little bit more now you can see when I mash it's coming out pretty good so because of this arc we have air bubbles should go up and out of the caliper and uh, no air should be allowed to come back in except for potentially around the threads. And that's what I was talking about earlier. And I'll show in a minute how I use grease to sort of cover that issue. Um, some people put grease on these threads uh, from the get-go. Um, I only really do it if I see a lot of bubbles coming out when I tap the caliper. I'll show that here in a minute. Now, if you have a helper, um, that's great, as long as they can follow directions. Uh, you basically want to coordinate the mashing of the pedal with an opening of the bleed valve and then when the pedal's all the way down you want to close the valve and let them release all the way back up and then when they start to press again you start to open again and you just repeat that over and over. To eliminate all confusion I've got some fresh against the dirty that's coming out. You can see what we're looking for. Until it's this clear color, just keep going. So I typically go like about 10 pedal meshes before adding some more fluid, but you wanna keep the fluid up above the min level. You don't wanna allow any air to get in from the reservoir. So just keep adding fluid as you go. Now some people say you gotta put the cap back on or it'll splash out. And here you can see I'm mashing on the pedal um, and it, it vibrates a little, but it's not splashing at all. Um, so I don't know about that, but just to be safe, definitely um, put your cap back on um, while you're mashing on the pedal. So eventually you should start to see the clear the clear fluid coming out, or almost clear. And uh, once you're at that point, you're good to go to uh, close off the bleeder. Uh, but before that, I like to tap on it a bit, get any air bubbles out that might be in there. You can see some air bubbles coming. Now this can be a little tricky because if the bleeder valve is open a little past a certain point, air will actually leak in and come up through the nipple, <clears throat> kind of scaring you, but not really indicating air is going into the system necessarily. So this is where 
I'll put the grease around the threads and you can see the bubbles have stopped already and then I'll give it a couple more taps and uh, no more problems so um, sometimes you can get a false alarm like that just use that grease to seal it off and uh, double check it so just complete that job for all four wheels and top off the reservoir and take the car out and activate the ABS a few times to flush that part of the system out unless you have the tool which most of you want um, fluid should look nice and clean like that when you're done that's how it's done thanks for watching